Okay, a lot of people have been waiting for this one. I did reappear on the Jesse Lee Peterson show in person. This was actually his TV only version, uh, TV only show called The Fallen State, not the Jesse Lee Peterson radio show of which I've been kicked off before. Um, and it was a very interesting appearance. And I think people who follow me understand that the attitude I took was this entire thing is really not super serious. And it was sort of, uh, 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 I, took a, I took a distant approach in that my priority was not to get too worked up by the things that Jesse Lee Peterson said, most of which made absolutely no sense. There's also, we're gonna keep in the edit before they went live, for some reason, the camera cut to us just awkwardly sitting on the stage and it went out on air during his live stream. And then his intro started. And it is a very, very awkward moment. This is the entire thing uncut, my interview on The Fallen State with Jesse Lee Peterson. <laughs> We are amazing. Welcome to to the uh, Father State YouTube Live. I'm Jesse Lee Peterson. Apologize for the late start, but we are black, and black people are late. We start on CP time. It is midterm election season, and I have with me David Pacman. He is the progressive host of the political television and radio program, The David Pacman Show. David, thank you for coming. I, I can't believe I'm here. I know, it's amazing. Last time we didn't end well, you I remember. Know. Right. You, do you remember? I remember I, I had to kick you off my show. You kicked me off, you said, I would never have that idiot back on my show. Yeah. You call me a girly man. Yeah. What changed your mind about having me back after the ban? That's really my producer. Oh, you didn't even want me here? No, I want you here. Oh, you did? I totally oh, okay. do. I, I, I'm glad you're here. Oh. Right. Just because I fight with you, doesn't mean I don't love you. Okay. Yeah, you love me? I don't really know you. Do you, you have to know me to love me? I have a general love for all people, but I don't know you. But do you need to know me to love me? Not as a human, no. Why not? No, I'm saying I don't need to know you to oh, love you to as love part me. of the human race. Okay. Yeah. Well, I love you. Thank you. Uh, are you surprised? Not really. Were you surprised that I threw you off the radio show? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Uh, and you didn't seem pleased with my answers. Oh, you were not answering. That's what it was. was I would it? ask you a question. I would ask you where you're going and tell me where you've been. Mm. And so you can't really do uh, uh, bring forth a good show that way. But sometimes you will admit a question can be sort of, it's like, when did you stop beating your wife, right? Like, not every question is fair. I don't, maybe. Well, maybe you beat your wife. I don't know. But and that would be an example. You never beat your wife? I'm not married. Oh. Yeah. Well, wait until you get married. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, so, David, what I, um, what I want to talk to you about, I want to talk about politics. Mm -hmm. I want to get to know you a little better. Let's do it. And so my first question, are you a Christian? No. You're not, are you, do you believe in God? I don't. So are you an atheist? Uh, I, I have an absence of belief in God. If you want to call that atheism, it could be agnosticism. I'm not really sure, but I have an absence of belief in God. But it's not like I'm not going around telling people God doesn't exist. Right. It's sort of like... If we heard a noise in the back right now, I wouldn't say to you that was probably an invisible purple hippopotamus. I have no evidence that that's what it is. I would say it's probably a noise caused by something we've seen, something we can prove, something there's evidence for. I wouldn't tell you invisible purpose, purple hippopotamuses don't exist or could never exist. Right. I just have no reason to think that that's what caused the noise. Have you always not believed in God? Have you ever believed? <sighs> You know, when I was younger, um, so culturally and ethnically, I'm Jewish. Right. So I was around a lot of Jewish people growing up. So there were Old Testaments around, and I would, I would look at them. And, you know, I was sort of, I was kind of a blank slate in the sense that my parents never imposed religious beliefs on me. Yeah. But they also didn't tell me, you shouldn't believe anything. It was sort of open. You know, I could look at the Old Testament. I could listen, talk to people. Uh, so there was a period, you know, I'm still open to the possibility of there being a God, right. and, and I always sort of have been, but that's, I don't currently believe that there is one. Uh, so I, I believe I read that you are part Jewish and part Argentinian? Well, they're two different things. So uh, I'm fr I was born in Argentina. My family, a lot, of, um, a lot of Jews from Eastern Europe before and after the Holocaust moved out of Eastern Europe, oh, as I'm sure you know. Right. 
Argentina is one of the places that they went. So my family is, is so I'm, I'm ethnically Jewish, right? But my family was in Argentina. So like I grew up speaking Spanish and, and in that sense, I'm sort of of Hispanic culture, you could say. Oh, I see. Yeah. Oh, okay. And um, I know you, you are a progressive, right? Not a liberal. I don't really know the difference at this yeah, point. Yeah, I was gonna ask, is there a difference? You know, uh, a lot of this stuff is just semantics. Um, I think it's better, you know, I could tell you what my views are on any particular issue, right. but whether I'm, you know, progressive or, or liberal or, I don't know, I don't know what we gain from talking Would about Would you that. consider yourself progressive? I, I want to see progress. So in that sense, by, by the dictionary definition, I guess so. Yeah. The problem is that there might be, you might have some ideas about what is implied by the political term progressive that maybe I agree with, maybe I don't, but right. I definitely want to see you know, humanity progress, for sure. Um, and, and one of the reasons I'm concerned about you being a progressive is that... <laughs> <laughs> Me specifically or all progressives? All men. Men, only yeah. men. Only men. Progressive women don't concern you. It's, it's normal, normal, abnormal for women to be progressive. Interesting. Or a liberal, but wow. it's abnormal for a man to be a liberal or progressive. It's a sign of being a beta male. I didn't know we that. Because real men are conservative, Republican, hmm. you know, and strong in wow. nature. Uh, so I'm concerned if you are liberal or progressive. If I became conservative, would I no longer be beta? You would become alpha. Wow. Something to think about. Yeah. How did you become a liberal slash progressive? Were you always that way or did something happen along the way? No, interestingly, you know, I'm glad you asked that actually. In, uh, in high school, I took a lot of uh, sort of standard, what we would call like classical economics. Yeah. And classical economics is pretty conservative in a lot of ways. You know, it assumes uh, rational actors participating in the economy. It assumes a lot of stuff that, that's sort of it, right now more conservative in terms of economics. So I had a lot of those ideas and I thought that they made sense. And then I learned more about behavioral economics and the work of people like Daniel Kahneman and others who say, you know, economics as we usually teach it is, is not right. And so that made me question the beliefs that I had sort of assembled over time. And then I was questioning all of my beliefs. So I definitely have had a, sort of a shift to the left. I was never yeah. a right winger. Yeah, I'm not saying right. that. Yeah. But I've definitely moved to the left the more I've become educated about issues. This is why it's not good to allow children to go to public schools. Mm, tell me more. Because they're brainwashing them. And well, turning, I didn't go to public school. They're turning them away from their values. I didn't go to public well, school. Private school, too, if you don't watch out for it. I'm kidding. I, I did go to uh, public school. Yeah. Uh, do your parents know that the school education system had this impact on you, t turned you into a liberal? Do they know that it had this impact on me? Yeah. That's interesting. I mean, they know my political views. Oh, they do. They do. And are they happy with them? Do they, they they're agree very happy. with you? They're very happy. They no, my, my mom is the happiest Jewish mom you could imagine. Yeah. <laughs> so you've not been married. You have, you're not married or never been married. No kids and all that. I, I've never been married. That's true. Yeah. Um, I'm not currently married, of course, and I, do, I don't have children at this time. Yeah. Um, do you date? I do. And do you find that it's difficult for young men, men in your age group, to find good women to date? Not at all. Not at all? Not at all. Um, the women that you date and have dated, are they controlling? How, now, I do date women exclusively, but I'm, how did you know that I date women? It's possible I date men or both, right? Well, that is possible, but yeah. I wouldn't assume that about you. Didn't you didn't assume that then. Okay. Yeah, unless you tell me. No. Do you date men too? Exclusively women. Oh. Whew. Would it be a, a bad thing for our conversation if I dated men? Well, it wouldn't be bad for our conversation. It would be interesting. Okay. Uh, why don't you date men? I'm not attracted to men. Oh, good. Yeah. Um, I don't see anything wrong with it, but I know you do. You do not see anything wrong with it? With being attracted to men? Why not? Why, why would it be wrong? Uh, because it's of the same sex, mm -hmm. so it's abnormal. But that's not an argument. It's a fact. What makes something normal? Let me ask you this. Um, I wanted to ask you this, too. And I wanted to ask this on my radio show. Please. If a woman decides that, oh, you know, I feel like a man, mm -hmm. and I want to be a man, and she goes to a doctor, rushes down the road to a doctor's office. Yep. He takes off her female body parts mm. and attach male body parts to them, wow. to her. Would that make her a male? Would it make her male uh -huh. or would it make her a man? Either one. Depends both. how you define either, right? All right. Would it make her a man or a, ma a male? Would she still be a woman with body part of a man? I mean, it'd be a transgender man. 
But would it be a woman? It would be. It would make her a man. It would be a transgender man. I what think. What does that mean? It means it's someone who was born biologically female, wouldn't it? Right. This isn't my area of expertise. Right. I'm just. I'm interested but in just the conversation. But normal people, you know, right from wrong when you see it, right? Do I know right from wrong? I don't know. Do I? You don't know if you know right from wrong. I think people <clears throat> want to know what's right and what's wrong, but does, does every, if everybody knew right from wrong, no bad things would ever happen, right? But how about you? Do you know right from wrong? I, I feel like I do. Right. And so if you saw, if you knew a female who took off her body, female body mm. parts, and attached uh, a male body part to them, mm -hmm. would you think, wow, that's a man, or would you still know that's a woman? Depends on the person, right? I, depends. How, what they look like and, and sort of how they exist well, how in the world. How about a woman that you knew? You knew her very well. She yeah. said, David, you and I are good friends. Today I'm going to become a man. Okay. I'm going down to the doctor's office there and have some male body parts attached. Right. Would you still think, would you think that your friend is a woman or a man? I mean, my reaction would be radical empathy. I would say, oh, wow, that's a major change. <laughs> like, what, what's going on that's making you want to do that? And I would listen to them. Yeah. with empathy. But would you th know it's still a woman or would you think it's a man? Would Hard you to say. Think it's a man? Hard to say. I mean, every person's different, right? I'm talking about you. Would no, you I mean, every, the other person, every other person. I don't know what they, what they would be like, what it would be like to be with them. But what would you think? Uh, I don't would know you still, who's like, the I person. would still know that that's a woman. Right. I don't care how many male body parts she's attacked. Right. It's still a woman. Okay. But would you consider it might be a man? Would you think of it as a man? It? Would I think of it as a man? Right. It's a person, right? I don't say right, it. It's a female. But would you think of the female as a man? We'd have to meet and see what it's well, like. You right? already know her. You, you grew up with her. She's a good friend. Right, but this is imaginary. Would you think it's a man or a woman? I have no idea. Amazing. Um, you don't believe in God. Where do you get your values from? Where do I get my values? Yes. Culture, family, science. Interesting. I wanted to ask you about, let me first ask, do you have anything to ask me? Any questions, you, anything you disagree with me about? Well, we had our little of course thing we disagree, we, but... Like, what do you disagree with me about? What do we agree about? I don't know that we agree on anything. Like what, for example? Uh, economics, social issues, um, gay marriage. Uh, I, I don't know. Do we agree about anything? Well, it sounds like we don't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to ask you about Judge Kavanaugh. Okay. When the uh, children of the lie tried to take his life. I'm not familiar but, with them. Uh, the children of the lie, the liberal media, the Democratic Party, oh. the right of Republicans, the never Trumpers. Okay. Uh, the, so like everybody but Trumpers. The hashtag movement, those evil women hashtag movement. Hashtag people, Civil rights leaders, all those folks. They are children of the lie. It's a lot of people. It is. <laughs> they have a lot, a big family. Mm. But um, when they tried to destroy him, that woman... Um, whatever her name is, it won't come to me. It doesn't right. matter to you anyway, right? I mean, uh, yeah. When she lied on him, and you saw that the children of the lie tried to destroy this man, mm -hmm. his wife, and his children okay. by accusing him of being a rapist and all that, calling him a rapist, were you disappointed to see the children of the lie acting that way? So, this is one of those questions where the framing of the question we have to talk about. Because okay. you're assuming that I already believe she lied. But I don't know that she lied. I don't have any evidence that she lied. Did you, did you pay attention to the hearing? I watched the, every minute. Did you hear anything that indicated she was telling the truth? Yes. I, there was no... So here's a couple things. I'll tell you what to me suggested she was telling the truth. Number one, it was all downside for her coming forward. There was no upside. She's not going to get any money now because she made the allegation. She's not going to live a better life. She had to move. So first of all, it's sort of like motive. There was no upside to her. There was the chance that maybe it would prevent Kavanaugh from being confirmed. But most people, including me all along, were saying, this isn't going to stop his confirmation. So that was one thing that made me not doubt her, that there was really nothing to gain. The second thing is, during the hearing, which was like, what, 10 hours long? It was very, very yeah, long, like long. five hours each of them. Yeah. Um, there were like dozens of questions that Brett Kavanaugh didn't answer. And she answered every question. And when I see that, and I see one person answering every single question, and the other person not answering so many questions, based on my experience talking to people who sometimes lie and sometimes tell the truth, I believe that it's more likely the person not answering the questions is the person lying. Amazing. Yeah. So she was asked when, where, and how. 
I don't know where it happened. I don't know when it happened. I don't no, know she did who say where it happened. It had been I don't know. This, house. I don't know that. Only thing I remember is a beer, and then she developed this little re, a little girl voice. It's supposed to be a professor, and she developed this little. What's let, the woman's name? That, let's uh, Christine, Blayton Christine Blayton Ford, right? So let me see if she I understand. She developed this false little girl tone. Her, her voice th- made you not trust her. No, her line made me. She had no proof. But of then anything. why are you mentioning her she voice? She doesn't remember when, where, or how. The only thing she remembers is a beer. That's not and true. So you she remembered to, a lot of stuff. You would have to want to believe her, not to see that she was lying. And plus, she seemed no, mentally so. off. You know, like. Like the lights was on, but nobody was home. You're making assessments of who's mentally off on, no, t- she, on TV. She seemed mentally off. And that's your assessment? Yeah, because she's okay. like, you know, she's like kind of weird. She was weird. Yeah, it's like they went to the gates of hell over in Israel. Kavanaugh seemed normal to you. Over in Israel, there is a, a little old city now where the gates of hell is there. And it's a dark pit that if you go down in there, you can't return, they say. And so whenever I see women like that and men like that, it reminds me men and of, women like what like four just wicked lying this woman was willing to destroy this man because she didn't agree with his politics she was being used i believe because she kind of out there i think that i'm pretty sure the, she was a she was the, a republican the, i don't the, know what politics you no, disagree with no. can i ask you a question this She's is a i want i want to understand but I, what I, could she have done during the hearing where you would have said you know what i do believe her like what could she have i know you don't believe her right right like the way it went down you don't believe her right what could she have done during the hearings where you would have said, I believe her? Uh, if she had, had she gone there and said, you know what, the children of the lie trying to use me to destroy Judge Kavanaugh. But that would be a lie. And I see no reason this man should be destroyed. And so I just want you to know not to trust the children of the lie. So then only if she were canted, you would have believed I would have, her. I would have believed that. Wow. Or had she brought real evidence, mm. but she brought none, wow. zero. And, but that's how evil the children on the left are. They'll destroy you to get what they want, and that's power and wealth. I'm curious, if they're so powerful, the children of the lie. But they're not powerful. Oh, I thought you just I said, said they that's were. That's what they want. I thought they they you said will they, will just, they will destroy you. They will. They'll destroy you. They'll try to destroy oh, you okay. to get power and gotcha. wealth. Gotcha, Do you gotcha. agree with that? No. No. Really? Do you trust the... Uh, would you want someone to falsely to accuse you and now you and the world have to believe the accuser and not believe you. Or would you rather be it's funny be you mention that innocent yeah. until proven guilty? So there's two different things, right? In our justice system, in our legal system, we have innocence until guilt has been proven. Right. There's no question about that. What happened with Dr. Christine Blasey Ford was not a, was not part of the justice system, right? This was people like you and me and hundred senators and the public making an assessment of the believability of two different people, right? So nobody, I would say to you, innocence until guilt has been proven is logical if you're looking at putting someone in prison. But this wasn't a criminal trial. You, you acknowledge that, right? That's so ridiculous. I don't know what to say about it. It's just true. It. It's interesting how when the children of the lie... No, but saying it's ridiculous isn't you, an argument. It's ridiculous. It's not an argument. This man was accused. I don't care if it was an innocent man walking down the road. Mm. You don't just accuse people. And whatever reason you're going to make up for it doesn't make sense. This well, woman, they, she accused this man right. with no proof, and the children of the lie tried to destroy him oh, come with on, no proof. Okay. Would you want to be falsely accused before any reason at all, whether it's for a job? Of course not. <laughs> or, right. You want, and then if someone should accuse you, yeah. wouldn't you want the hearer to assume you're innocent? You're innocent I would want proof. the legal system to I mean, assume even, that. So you wouldn't mind if it's not if it's someone or not the legal system. People have tried to prove a point. This is I'm sure you're going to denounce this because of your your strong position against false allegations. Um, because of my position that Christine Blasey Ford seemed credible to me, people actually started contacting local media claiming I raped them because they said, David, we're going to show you how easy it is to get people in trouble with false rape allegations. Especially for men. And they started doing it. And you know what? The, the allegations were so obviously not credible that they didn't go anywhere. Because obviously false allegations don't go anywhere. Well, that's because you, right now you're not of value to them. You can't hurt them. So it, it meant nothing. But it meant nothing put to yourself who? in a position such as Judge Kavanaugh or let's get, say that you get some influence where you can influence people in a way that okay. will change for you. Right. You know, uh, I asked you, did you, uh, uh, 
date girls and you say, well, how, why would you assume I date girls? It's interesting that you assume that. Yeah. yeah. Should I assume you date boys? No. Oh, because it's normal to assume you date girls until uh, otherwise. Statistically speaking, you're right. right. Yeah, so, most people are heterosexual. Yeah. So was I wrong for assuming you date girls? I'm not at all offended, no. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I just means, found it interesting. But it's interesting that a straight man would make that. No, would the, bring that up. The reason was you've called you, me a girly man so many times. Remember oh, that's we because talked about you're that? Weak. Oh, okay. That, that's I, because it's not because I think you that I'm gay. That, right. <laughs> Got it. Glad we clarified. Oh. <laughs> um, what do you think of this so talk so called hashtag uh, Me Too movement? In what sense? Do what you do support I think it? Of? Well, I support destigmatizing coming out and saying if something has happened to you. That's what I support. Really? Yeah. But do you so you you don't support the entire movement? I don't know what the what the bounds of the movement are. I mean, to the extent that the idea of the movement is you know, a lot of people are sexually assaulted and raped, and they don't come forward. And the reason they don't come... I don't believe come, that. You don't believe that? That's a made-up lie, too. Oh, who made that up? The children of the left. Oh, I should have... The children of the lie. I should have known. Yeah, they made that up because, if you notice, they say things over and over and over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. And if you're not paying attention, you find yourself believing in it. Well, but when you really, really do research, you find out that it's not true. Like, they were claiming at one time that there were uh, rape on college campuses was out of control, right? Mm. We now found out that that was a lie. And so How did you women, find out it was a lie? Research has proven that. I don't have any with me. but There's no rape that. on campuses. Not, it's not out of control in the manner that they have pretended that it How is. How do you define out of control? Uh, it's not happening in the numbers that they say. What numbers did they say? But the children of the lie, I don't have numbers, but the children of the lie say that because they want to deceive you. And then they bring in all this emotion. Oh, mm. I was 30 years ago, I was walking down the road and a man raped me. So you don't have and, and the then, numbers or the and, studies, and, and but you just know it's not yeah, that you, bad. Because another thing, too, if you notice it, it doesn't make sense that they go public with that anyway. It's not oh. going to make their lives better. This is a different argument. The only thing it's going to do is hurt men, so these women are lying. Isn't that an argument that would suggest that they're telling... Like you just said, it's not going to make their lives better to go public. Isn't that why we should say, wait a second, Christine Blasey Ford, a college campus rape victim... It's not going to make their lives better, so they probably are telling the truth, no, right? No, they're doing it because they hate men. Oh. And they especially hate straight, white, conservative, Christian men of power mm. because it's the straight, white, conservative, Christian man who's holding the country together. Oh. If it wasn't for them, America would be a socialist society already. It would be what? A socialist society. How would it become because socialist? if you see, if you notice the average black man has no authority, no power, the Mexican doesn't have any, is that yeah. white, straight, conservative Christian man that is preventing them from turning this country into a, you know, a socialist society. But so here, let me ask you about this. I'm not a socialist myself. I'm a social, de just to be clear, I'm, I'm, I don't, I'm not advocating for socialism. Okay. I don't know that many actual socialists. Like who would... Who, where's the big desire for the U.S. to become socialist? If you look at the Democratic Party. There's a, almost no socialist in the Democratic Party. It's a socialist communist party now. It's what's, so one, what's one socialist and, idea from the Democratic Party? Um, uh, socialized health care. No, nope, that's a social, no. social democracy mm -mm. program. No. Yeah. Is Denmark notice, socialist? And if you notice that Barack Obama, the fallen messiah, you know he's the fallen messiah, right? I don't know anything yeah, about that. Fall, and Big Mama Michelle. Uh, he tried to turn America into a socialist society. What's one example of a socialist policy that he had? Uh, socialized health care. He didn't do that. He um, did for-profit Obamacare. Taking care of everybody. How so? Uh, by getting rid of jobs. Many people, most he people... He took care of people by getting rid of, rid of full -time jobs. jobs. And they had to work two part-time jobs in order to survive. Jesse, you and don't even the understand rest, the talking points the you're still using. The rest stopped working and just went and depended on and relied on the government. Free Obama phones. That's socialism. That socialism. You're so. How can you? Is so free Obama phone second. socialism. I want to ask a real question. I'm asking you a real question. Obama phones are not socialism. No, really? I'll answer your question. Let me ask you a real. Re there's a. Re I really want to know this. The arguments against places like Venezuela and Cuba, and other so-called socialist countries, are that no one has anything. No one can afford anything. There's no technology. There's no food. But you're saying that cell phones for people are socialism. Yeah. Is that that's your argument? Yes. All right. How That's an example of it. Um, so I, I want to move on, but I want to ask, so do, are you saying that you do not support 
hashtag movement, the hashtag movement 100%. I don't, I'm not really part of any of these Twitter movements. Right. If the movement is about empowering victims to tell people what happened, I support that. But you don't support the movement itself. I don't know what the lines of the movement are. You'd okay. have to define it for me. Um, do you agree with me that men should come out in the same manner that these evil women are doing and report women? Because more women are raping young boys, teenage boys, than men are with women. So girls. let me deal with the first part of the question would because you, I don't know suggest, about those statistics. But if your question is, should men come forward if they've been? Yeah. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Of course. And they should victim. turn this on these women so these women can see what it's like. Well, it's not. That be, would be vindictive. Uh, and that, as, as a man of God, I don't think you would, you would suggest revenge and vindictiveness in that way. No, would you? just don't be angry about it. Just tell it, the truth. But just use the laws against them as well. Well, I, I, would, because I would suggest Because we're not requiring the, the women to tell the truth while we're requiring the men to tell no, the truth. No, they are. Women are, every, no. every victim, if they don't tell the truth, and in fact, it just happened. There was a woman on a college campus who made a false rape allegation. She's going to prison. Because there, there are laws against That is good. Yeah. There are laws against that. It's yeah. rare, but it does happen. Um, so you do agree that the men should use those same laws to go after them? No, I believe that men should tell the truth, and if they've been assaulted by anybody, they should tell. But if they should accuse a woman, they should not have to prove it. They shouldn't be asked, well, why are you doing this? No, in a court they of law. They should be believed this, just because they said it. Are the, you right about that? We do you agree with that? We should believe, we should trust and verify all, right. all accusers. So you're not for to say about a woman can accuse you and she should not be disbelieved. Believed. I am for trust but verify. Right, but don't believe her just because she said it. The legal system's got to investigate. But if what, it turns out she lied, of course there should be consequences. But I'm asking you, should we believe it just because they said it? We shouldn't disbelieve it because it's such a big thing to come forward and make such an allegation. If we're going to put anybody in prison, we need, a tr we need a trial. We need an investigation, for sure. No matter who the accuser is, no matter who the victim is. And so should they be believed just because they said it? They shouldn't be written off. Should they be believed just because they said it? They should, and then we do an investigation. And they if it should turns be out they believed because they said it? We, how would you start an investigation if you don't believe them? Let me like, imagine this for a second. You're a police officer. I come in and I say, someone has uh, raped me. If you don't believe me, at all, you don't even investigate, right? So as the officer, you should say, this is someone who has decided to come down and tell me that this happened. I am now going to investigate it. You have to have some degree of plausibility in the claim to even say, let's do an investigation. This but, isn't really, is this even if interesting I'm a, if to you? If I'm a police officer, yeah. I, I'm not going to assume either way. I'm just going to take your information and check it out to see if it's You're going to check it out. But if you didn't but believe it, you wouldn't you even again, check it as out. As an individual, should we believe the women just because they said it? It's a false framing of the question. When you say would just you because they said it, it, just because they said it, I would trust them and I would verify. But you're not answering the question. That's the answer. But I'm you don't like the answer. You don't understand the question. I think I understand it. Uh, what, what is it about the question that's difficult for you? It's the framing of it because believe means what? I'm not saying on her say so we put somebody in prison, no, right? I, if you're asking me that. No, that's not what I'm asking. I would believe so it enough David, to investigate it. Do you? Would you, David? Patman, believe it just because she said it. I liked how you had to check what my, my last name was there. <laughs> I would, would believe you, it enough to investigate it, yeah. Give me just a yes. I'm black and slow. So give me a simple yes or no. Would you believe it just because they said it? How else would you find out about it if they didn't say You're it? You're not answering the question. This is oh, a your circle. friends are watching right now. I hope so. And they're watching because they thought you were going to keep my butt. So you got to live up to it. I found out would, this was a debate today. <laughs> would you, you believe imagine? it be, because they said it? I, I would believe it because the only way we're going to learn about it is if they say it, and then I'd investigate. So you would believe it? Yeah. Oh, okay. I want to ask you about anything you have for me? Any questions? Okay. No. The, um, I do have one. Is, yeah. Are these really the most important topics for you? Absolutely. Okay. Are there others that are more important for you? Yeah. Like what was that? Our economic system, wealth inequality, health care, well, geopolitics, nuclear disarmament, climate change. We're going to get to the Great White Hope, so I'm getting to that. All right. I, I got to ask you this. Ka uh, Colin Kaepernick, mm -hmm. I see him as a thug, and all of the other players who are kneeling during the national anthem, uh, that they are turning their backs on the flag, on the country, mm. men and women of the military, the fans. And I think they all should be fired and get and throw those SOBs out, right? Uh, do you agree with that? I don't. And why not? Well, I don't believe that 
anybody should be able to tell private businesses that aren't breaking the law how they need to do employee relations, right? So if I were to come in here and say, I don't know what kind of you know, fiduciary relationship you have to the people in this room, maybe, maybe they're employees. Uh, if I were the government and you weren't doing anything illegal with them, and I said, you got to fire these two, and I got two other, other people you have, you're a private business. You can do, you, as long as you're not breaking the law, you can do whatever you want. Right. So I don't know of any legal basis on which the NFL or the, it's really the teams individually that are the employers. I don't know how we justify having them fire players. I mean, it just do doesn't make any sense. Do we, the taxpayer, give money to uh, the uh, NBA? I thought we were talking about football. Right, uh, NFL, whatever it's called. Doesn't football. even matter, right? right. This is just, Sports you're trying theory. to get this point on the record. Do, yeah. do we give money to them? They're as, as, as consumers or as taxpayers? taxpayers? Well, there are some stadiums that are uh, built with taxpayer money right. in exchange for the amount of biz tax revenue that they bring to the city. Right, and so is that government involvement? It's government involvement, yeah. And so shouldn't the government have, some, have something to say about it then? No. Because you wouldn't apply that to any other business. It's no. not 100% private owned. So we do have something to say about it, right? Can I give you a counter no, uh, example? That first, first. We, there is not, and I'll tell you why, if okay. you allow me. Um, if you have a private business and you pay into the state's unemployment insurance, the government is now involved with your business. Does that mean they can come in and tell you what to do? No. But if it's I a silly have a argument. private business and I'm paying into it, well, private we businesses paying, pay into I mean, unemployment I, I, insurance. I'm a yeah. taxpayer. My money is going to the government and it's being given to the yeah. football teams or association, right? So I have something to say about it. This isn't but my argument. I'm just telling you that's not the way it works legally. Let's go back to that, though. So you don't think it's wrong to turn your back on the country? That Because if it wasn't for football, there would be no Colin Kaepernick. And most of these black players, there will be uh, hood rats. they will be thugs. they will be in jail. And so that's not a good why argument, not though. turn, why do we have to put up with these thugs? You don't have to. Like that's, that. You can say I'm not going to go should to any more football fired? games. No, there shouldn't be. There's no should legal the basis to fire them. fans stop supporting? That's up to the fans. Would you recommend that? No. You would not. And why not? I just don't see why anyone would do that. Um, and so you're happy with them doing this? You, you think it's okay? I, I support the First Amendment and free speech. But not at work. Sure. You can't do that at work. The, the teams can decide. If my employee did that at work, I would fire them so fast right. and get their heads swim. But that's your call if that's in your employee handbook. But shouldn't they do that? It's up to the teams. Okay. I got to ask you about Kanye West. Um, what do you think about Kanye West, his relationship with the president, and all the things that are happening around him right now? Uh, I've never liked his music. I think he has significant mental illness. It appears that he's off his medicine, and I've never heard him say anything particularly interesting. So you see him the way I see Ford, Christine Ford. I'm not sure. It looked as though she left her medication at home, too. I, I wouldn't be able to say. Yeah, but how come you can't see she's mentally off, or appears to be mentally off, but you think that Kanye West is mentally off? Just didn't see it that way. Why not? That's my perception. What has he done to give you that impression? Uh, his, I mean, did you see the video of him in the Oval Office? Yes. Um, I'm not a mental health professional, but the mental health professionals I've spoken to, including many in my family, identified that he seemed uh, manic, uh, bipolar, and generally off. And he did say, at some point, I think he said something about being off his medication. So I think it's pretty widely established. What did he do to imply that? Those things I, I just him? told you. Right, you say he seemed that way, but what was he doing to imply that? Uh, again, his manic nature, his uh, inability to sort of sit still, have a normal conversation, swearing in the Oval Office, looking around very anxiously, nervously, saying things that don't make sense, saying slavery was a choice. I mean, you know. Would, so you thought that slavery was a choice, was a don't make sense comment? I thought it was inaccurate. Really? Why? Because um, slavery is not a choice. Amazing. Um, do you agree with him that he, as a black man, and black people should be free thinkers. Of course. They should not be on the plantation of the Democratic Party. I disagree with that framing. And along with the okie doke. I, regardless of the race of people, they should be free thinkers. Right. And so you agree with him when you said that? I don't agree with the characterization about plantations. Why not? Because I just think it's nonsense. But I do agree that everybody, regardless of race, should be a free yeah. thinker. And so black people, not all, not all, not all, but most have been on the plantation for over 40 or 50 years now. What do you mean? Of, of the Democratic uh, uh, Party. And they don't think for themselves. And whenever the Democrats 
want a vote. They mm-hmm. need a black vote. They just cry racism. Do you and speak the, for black people? And the black people go into a trance, and they go in and they just yeah. They 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 reach for the D while eating chicken. And Let they, me suggest to you that it's not press, that way. And they press, no, it is that way. Well, can I, are you open so, to hearing why yeah, I don't think I, so? I am, but let me okay. finish this. Good. So isn't that a plantation? Hillary Clinton, when she wants the black vote, mm. she goes to the churches, black churches. Sure. I don't feel no ways tar. I feel like going on. And the black go, yeah, praise the Lord, mm. praise the Lord. Okay. And so, okay, we got to vote next month. Yep. I think we're going to that trance. Here's why I don't think... Isn't that a a plantation mentality? Okay, so you've given us one example. Can I give you a counterpoint? Is that a plantation mentality? I don't know that particular example, but let me explain to you why I don't think that that black Americans are so-called in the tank for the Democratic Party. Um, When Proposition 8 came up here in California, um, Democrats almost exclusively supported... Um, legalizing gay marriage or banning the outlawing of gay marriage. Right. Uh, although black Americans in California tend to vote with Democrats, right. on that issue they didn't. Right. And to me that says they're not voting for Democrats because Democrats have in some way co-opted them because as soon as there was an issue that they disagreed with Democrats on, they voted the other way. Well, at that time they did believe they had some sense of values. They had their own but beliefs, they have yeah. been corrupted. Since that time, no, their view might and have I, changed. And on I that guarantee issue. you, if they went now and voted for, and asked them to vote for, it, they'll go with the homosexuals. I hope so. And the Democratic Party because I hope so. they have been morally bankrupt. I, well, the, I disagree with that. The radical homosexuals but... have gotten in there and they corrupt the churches, mm. the, and they have given money to the preachers, black preachers, and so now. So what you're doing in the values have changed. So you probably get them going along. with I think you're right, but what you're doing is called a special pleading in terms of logical fallacies. You made an umbrella statement, and I gave you a counterexample, which would disprove it. And then you introduced some new reason why that's not a good counterexample. At that time, they were not as corrupt as they are today. There's no evidence but of that, the, the radical homosexuals saw that happen. They're like, oh, no, we cannot have this. And so whenever they want to get the, the radical homosexuals and mm. Black Lives Matter, all those the abortion people, uh, the uh, National Organization of Women Who Hate Men, what makes, a, what makes a homosexual radical? That, whenever they want to get their radical agenda across, yeah. what they've sharply done is they say, oh, this is racism. Mm. Just like the black people, you're discriminating against us, right? What does racism so have to do with the Prop 8 people hear vote? that. This is incoherent, they, though. The black people hear that. They say, oh, these people love us. So we're going to vote with them. That's what they've done to most blacks. Fears and of so, racism made black people vote against Prop 8? Is that what you're saying? No, the, at that time, they were yeah. not in support of, they knew that homosexuality or same-sex marriage was wrong. Okay. Because they still had some sense of value at that time. But they lost that That sense. has changed, yes. Mm. For the most part. Wow. No, 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 no. It's coming back, though, thanks to the Great White Hope. And, in, and speaking of the Great White Hope, um, what do you think of the president now? He's been there almost two years. Mm. What's your impression of him today? Oh, it's embarrassing. In what way? Well, all of the countries that are our traditional allies uh, are no longer even including the United States in important conversations because Trump just doesn't understand anything. He embarrasses himself time and again. It's a real, you know, it's a, it's, it's a, we, t- I, this, the pro- this program is the fallen state. I yes. feel like the office of the White House is in a fallen state. And so that's why you say the president, you, you don't like him because of the reason you just gave me? Is no, you asked me how I thought he was doing. Right, give me something real. Uh, that, that's all real. I mean, let's, uh, what, give me an area. Is and there I'll, anything you're happy with him about? I, there's one thing I like, okay, which is that in the, um, in the tax plan that he did, he lowered, uh, did you follow the tax plan? Somewhere. Okay. He lowered the threshold at which point medical expenses become deductible. So, you not now can spend a smaller amount on medical expenses before they become deductible, which I think is a good thing. Is there anything else? Not that I can think of. That's it? Yeah. Amazing. And you have been paying attention to what he's done over the last year and a half? Yeah. Or over two years, almost two years? Yep. And so that's the only thing that you can think of? Offhand. Amazing. Are you for open borders? No. Are you for the wall going up? No, I don't think it'll make a big difference. I think Why it'll. Not? Well, the overwhelming majority of people who are undocumented and are here 
are um, overstaying visas. They're coming in from other countries anyway. So I think that the best way we can cut down on undocumented immigration would be to work with the countries people are coming from to reduce corruption and improve the economies. I think it'll be cheaper and I think it'll be more effective. Amazing. And so there are a caravan of illegal aliens coming out between three to 4,000, uh, 400,000, I think, something like that. Uh, are you happy that when you turn on the TV, you see these people coming? I'm not for, so, I mean, I'm, I'm against crossing the border So illegally. should we put the wall up before they get there so they can't cross? We could make it so that they're not even trying to come over here if we actually worked with the countries they're coming from to improve the economy. So Israel put up a wall around its borders. Was Israel wrong for doing that? Uh, well, wrong and effective are two different things. It's, it's, so let's do both. Were they, were they wrong for putting up a border? Very a different situation. Have you been to Israel? I have. Have you gone to those areas? I have. So have I. I mean, I think that the main, there's, there's a couple differences that are, that are going on there. I mean, one is that Arab Israelis are Israeli citizens. And what you're talking about there is like a very specific security situation. I would still prefer that wall not be necessary, right? But it's not the same situation. That's it's not amazing analogous. to me. Yeah. So again, I'm black and slow. So I need some yes and no's. Uh, was Israel raw for putting up a border? Yes or no? It, it would be up to them to say. Who no, am I to say if they were right or wrong? You're saying about our borders. I'm Was, not saying it would be wrong. I'm saying it's not what I would do. Uh, if they the, want to do it, do it. The border that Israel put up, is it effective? I'm not sure. So all of a sudden you're dumb when it comes to Israel. If, if you want to go you're to ad hominems, you're by all Jew, means. You're man. You know if that wall is effective. You don't keep up with what's happening in Israel? I keep up with it. I don't know the specifics of how effective the wall is. You do. You're not is. being honest right no, now. No, I really don't. No, no, no. I don't believe it. Okay. I won't accept it, Paul. You do know, but you won't say. Okay. And the reason you won't say because you know that that wall is effective. You know they did the right thing to put it up, but you won't say it because that means that you know, if you admit this about Israel doing it, uh, no, no. you will have to admit I'm that speculating we here. should put a wall around our board. So you're not being honest. I'm speculating here. shame on you for that. Do I, do I get to talk at all? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm speculating that in Israel... It's a very different situation to even get in the country. So you don't have in Israel, in what's a very small country, the situation of overstayed visas, which are, again, in the U.S., most people that are here illegally are not physically crossing a border. You're deviating It's just a very right different, well, no, it's a different situation. No, you're deviating. They have a wall. There are other countries that have a wall. And common sense people know that you should put a wall around your house if you have strangers coming in uninvited. And then we have these, People coming from asshole countries, and we don't have no idea who's crossing the borders. Uh, we can have Bin Laden folks coming. Okay, and, but and, let's and, think and pragmatically. MS-13, dr yeah. drugs and violence, and, and then these women are coming with these babies, no fathers. We have to take care of those babies. But let me ask you a question. And you say, well, oh, no, I don't, let's I don't know. Let's say you put up the wall. Well, Israel did it, but I'm just not sure about it. Jesse. I don't believe that. I can't believe that. If Israel puts up, uh, I'm sorry, if, if the U.S. puts up the wall, and every person crossing by land is stopped, which is about 35%. You've still got the other 65% that are here on overstayed visas and flying we in. Need to deal what do you do that. about them? We need to deal with that. Okay, how do you do we it? We need whatever it takes. But how would you do it? I don't know. I have no idea right now. But so how do you know thing, the wall is a great idea, but you don't know what else to do? Stop the flow by putting up the wall, yeah. and then we'll start cleaning up the mess inside the home. And our, and, which is our country. Uh -huh. And that's what Israel did, and we should do the same thing. Okay. I'm glad Israel did it. It's the right thing to do, but it's, it's also right for my country. And I'm a little surprised you want to admit that because you know it's true. No, that's, I mean, I think we just disagree. Amazing. Um, <laughs> it's crazy to disagree, isn't it? The, the children of the lie were screaming, oh, about the illegal alien mothers. Okay. Oh, you're separating the mothers from the children. Oh, no. Don't do it. Do you know? Do you agree with me? That was drama. They didn't. They don't care about the illegal aliens, the children, or the mothers. I've seen no evidence that they don't care about the children or the mothers. Really? Yeah. And where is the evidence that they do care? I tend to believe people are good generally, and I have no reason to suspect that someone who claims to care about the suffering of others doesn't really care. Then why don't we hear the same cry out or crying when women inside this country commit crimes? 
they go to prison and the kids are left behind. I think Why you do are hear they that. saying that, oh, listen, don't separate the mothers because the you illegal do alien women are committing a crime by coming here yeah. illegally and trying to get into our country. They care about that, but they don't care about the women who are citizens of this country committing crime and going to prison. I just read a very interesting piece about women's prisons in the New York Times, and it does seem people care about that. Amazing. And you believe that they do care? I have no reason to doubt it, yeah. Um, I want to ask, uh, the Great White Hope, more people working now? I believe I just saw a report, 7.1, I think, million jobs are available now. They don't have people trained well enough to take those jobs. Is that a good thing that the president has done? What did he do? Bring back jobs. How? It doesn't matter how. He's brought them back. Is that a good thing? If you're going to claim he did it, you have to explain how. Is that a good thing that it happened? Because it's good for there to be jobs. The I'm question sorry? is, what did he do to bring the jobs Whatever back? Whatever he did. Is but it a good can thing you that, identify what he did? I just told you, man. I'm so how do you know time. he did it? Is it a good thing that he did or not? Jobs are good. I'm okay. asking you what Trump did so to create them. So you're saying yes to that? Um, elections are coming up in November. Yes. Do you think the Democrats are going to win or the Republicans? I think the most likely scenario is Democrats take the House, Republicans keep the Senate. Really? And why do you think the Democrats would take the House? because of the uh, polling in the House races compared to polling in Senate races. You believe the polling? Um, generally speaking, yeah. Did you believe them when President Trump was running for president and all the polls were saying that Hillary's going to win? Did you believe that? Well, the national polls said Hillary would win by about three percentage points in the popular vote, and she did. Did you believe the polls when they say that Hillary Clinton was going to win? That's not what the polls said. They said no, she would win nationally. Even Hillary by, thought she, crooked line Hillary thought she was going to win. But that's a different argument, Justin. Did you believe that they were going to win? Did I believe who was going to the win? The Democrat, uh, uh, crooked Hillary. I believe the polls that Hillary would win the popular vote, and she did. But you didn't believe that she would become president? I thought it was, it was certainly plausible and likely, sure. And why did you think that? Why did I think that? No, why did you think that? Why didn't I? No, why did you think that? Oh, because of the polls. So you believe the polls, that Hillary Clinton would win? The, the polls were accurate in that she won the popular vote by 3%. That's and what because the, of that, you thought Hillary Clinton would win, right? Jesse, you're interrupting me. Go ahead. The, the national polls assessed what the popular vote difference would be. Right. They said Hillary would win by about 3%. She did. So did you believe that Hillary Clinton would win as president? I did, and I was wrong. People Based are wrong all the, the time. What the polls said, right? Yeah. So why are you, and the polls lied. They didn't lie. Yeah, they weren't true. They just didn't assess the electoral vote Why results. are you believing the polls now? I have no reason to doubt the polls. I suggest you should. Okay. We're dealing with the great white hope. I got to ask you just a couple more questions here. So, but so, just so I know, do you, are you saying the Republicans will keep the House? I'm not sure, but I have a strong feeling, especially with what happened with Judge Kavanaugh, the attack on him mm -hmm. by the children of the lie. Okay. I think even moderates and independents and Democrats who would normally not vote for a Republican, I think they were, and especially now that Republicans, people who support the great white hope, mm -hmm. President Trump, are under attack. Okay. You know, we see it with the representatives, the children are going to cafes and restaurants and airports and just carrying on, right? It's turning off a lot of people, mm -hmm. a lot of decent people. I guess we'll see. Do you believe that is happening? I don't think so. Not, not, I'm not seeing that now. I got to ask you, what is a man? I'm sorry? What is a man? I do politics, not dictionary. <laughs> Are you a man? I think so. And what is a man? You have a to male. get a dictionary You know person. the male thing, right? But a man, what is a man? Is this what you do, define words? Yeah, what is a man? I don't do definitions on my show. I, I'm not the right person to add. What, that's so boring. Do you know what it is? Do I know what a man is? Yes. When I hear the word man, I think of mankind, like homo sapiens, and you know, what's the future of mankind? Well, don't feel badly if you don't know what a man is because a lot of males don't know what a man is. Okay. You know, so you're not alone in this one. Okay. And these are some good males don't know what a man is. Mm. I gotta ask, uh, love, what is love? I, I don't do di dictionary definitions. You don't? No. So you, do you know what love is? <sighs> I think you know love when you see it. And, and what is it when you see it? You just know it. You yeah. can't even put it into words. It's so ethereal. Amazing. Yeah. Um, I got to ask, I know you need to make, uh, I want you, I know you're here for the uh, event this weekend. Tell the folks why you're in town and whatever else you want to promote. 
I'm here, I'll be at Politicon. I will be talking to people. I will be talking about politics. I will be reframing uh, bogus questions, which is something I like to do. I won't be doing dictionary definitions at any of my events. That's the one thing. If yeah. people are expecting that, I'm not doing any dictionary definitions. And I understand that because most people are shallow, mm. especially the intellectual, and they're not really deep thinkers. Mm. And, and dictionary and, definitions and, and so are the most you, surface thing. When right? you have to deal with real issues and real questions like this, it, like, it throws the intellectuals off. I agree. Because they don't necessarily do any. Yeah, we're not going to waste time there right. defining dictionary words. Um, so the uh, Politicon this weekend, folks, is at the Los Angeles Convention Center. Uh, you can buy a ticket at politicon.com. I'm going to be there on Sunday, 12 noon, uh, and another time at, on Sunday at 2 p.m. Wow. Uh, talking about the great white hope. They're uh, having you. Yeah. Wow. And uh, this is my second year. Incredible. And uh, Amazing. <laughs> and next week, we went downtown last, a couple weeks ago now, and we uh, filmed the slut walk. Mm. You know what the slut walk is? No. A woman by the name of Amarose has this movement going. Omarosa? Amarose. Oh. And she wants sluts mm. to be accepted. Women who have sex with a lot of men and, okay. just, and just be sluts. How do you define so, a lot of men? Like, at what, what's more the, than one. More than one, okay. Yeah. Got it. And so she's trying to take the shame out of being called a slut for mm -hmm. women. And so we videotaped that, and that is coming out next Thursday. It's so amazing. The amazing. sluts! It's so amazing. Incredible. You like sluts? I'm sorry? You sluts? like sluts? I don't know any. Have you ever slept with a slut? I don't think so. Would you date a slut? It's a pejorative. It's not a term I use. Amazing. My final question. Oh, do you know what a slut is when you see one? No. Uh, well, make sure you watch the slut walk okay. on the fall estate. Thank you. My final question. Did you have fun? No. <laughs> you did not? No, listen. I think that this is um, in, in a thousand years when the sociologists and the philosophers try to figure out what exactly happened in the United States right around this time, this type of conversation is going to be incredibly informative for them. So I'm glad to have participated in it. Good, man. They're going to say, wow, Jesse was amazing. And the intellectual guy, nice. <laughs> You're a nice guy. David, thank you for coming, man. Thank you for having I, me. I really do appreciate it. Thank you. All right. And uh, thank you all for tuning in. And don't forget to like, follow, tweet, share, uh, comment, and all that good, song, uh, good stuff. Check out our brand new song on the uh, jessaleepeterson.com on my Instagram. Um, You're doing songs now? Huh? Facebook, Twitter. Facebook, Twitter, yeah. You sing or you play an instrument? It's called or? beta mail. You know what a beta mail is? No. Check out the song. Cheers. Trump, right? <laughs> alpha, not beta. See him with the toilet paper on his shoe? Super alpha move, huh? Uh, I didn't see it, but alpha. Thank you all. Thank you, Dave. Thank you. All right. That was fun.